And here we go. A little bit long start but battle, but that's okay. Okay, so game number two. Starting with the side of AP. AP, similar setup to game number one. Same DDs. Ragnar, Yu Yang, Vampire. A little bit different change up here on the ships. Two Moskvas and the Henri still, but they've now brought a Salem. Conquer and Yamato for the battleships. So they're basically saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Minor change for the Salem, but I suspect that's because they might want uh, to put the Salem where they need longer, but short, uh, longer radar, but shorter distance. Longer range radar, but shorter distance. We'll see, though. Over on the side of KSC, double gearing and a Shimikaze for Aussie Zeus. Aussie Zeus is running the 20-kilometer Torp, so he's got the long-range YOLO Bolos. We'll see what he can do with those. Des Moines and two Des Moines, two Woosters for the side of KSC, and then an Ohio and... Is that a Kerr first I see there? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first Kerr first I can remember seeing in King of the Sea. Ever. I know that we had one banned early on in the group's stages, but interesting choice here. So, Kerr first. Reasons to bring a Kerr first. It's got, obviously, it's got a boatload of secondaries with long range. You're also looking at the fact that you've got the uh, 12 guns on the Kerr first as we zoom in here and watch him. But very very interesting choice with the curve first we'll have to see how that works out anyway back into game gearing of serpent lord pushing out towards d he's going to be playing the part of the dd trying to torp probably onto the edge and prevent anybody from coming around this edge here he's being trailed by double wooster and curve first that looks like that's an he spam side gearing to des moines and the ohio heading kind of towards c shimikaze heading to a on the side of ap Three DDs kind of going to the middle. So a little bit change here. Vampires heading to D. Yu Yang and Ragnar heading towards C. So they might try to get a quick pick on any DD that shows up at C. Henri, Moskva, and Conqueror heading over towards B. Yamato of Christopher Aelson kind of just going straight up the middle towards D. And the Salem and the Moskva heading towards D as well. So what I think they're going to do with the Salem here, we'll see if I'm right, is they're going to put the Salem on this edge of the islands here. Advantage of putting the Salem here on this edge of the island is that you cover the cap with your radar you can be running the radar module for longer radar if you want he's protected and american ap ballistics will allow you to come across those islands and catch stuff problem that might be an issue for them is usually you pair that with a dd in order to be able to spot and try to torp the enemy team doing the same thing AP doesn't have a DD out there. Their DDs are actually, they've cut the vampire off from D. He's not going there anymore. He's on, uh, he's joining the wolf pack here. Now, this is a ballsy play here from KSC. They're running the gearing smoke to cut the Des Moines over to C. I'm not sure where they're planning to put the Des Moines, if they're just going to let them send the open in spam or what, but this... This is going to be really interesting. This might play into the hands of AP with the fact that they've got all three DDs there so they can get some torps off on those smokes. But also, this might play into the hands of KSC because they're not ready for this. And Yu Yang spotted. Yu Yang has to get out of the cap. He takes a little bit of damage. Shots are missing him. Gearing and everybody's opening up on him. He's down to 17k. Oh, that was a big hit. Shots are out again. Looks like it might be the last set of shots. He takes a little bit more. Down to 14.6. So about 6,000, 8,000 off of him, pardon me. But now the gearing's having to play dodge on the Ragmar, Ragnar and the Moskva shots. Des Moines of Man with an RX-7 is going to dodge those torps, it looks like. Looks like he's got the torp line dodge. And none of those are going to hit Hataki Hiyoshi. So we'll have to watch what happens. First cap does go to the side of AP with Woshi taking B. So they're start taking points. But the Shimikaze of Aussie Zeus is going to re uh, claim A or claim A for the first time. So the points lead is going to stay at 8. Now, real interesting play here. And this is going to work beautifully, actually. With nobody there and it being a Salem radar, the Salem's radar is 8.5. So look where this gearing is. This gearing is 10 kilometers away from the Salem. Salem can't spot him. Only thing that could spot him is the Moskva. And the Moskva is well away and has a shorter radar. So look at the gearing. Gearing isn't spotted. He's able to uh, just sit outside the smoke and spot that Salem. And now the Salem is getting hammered. He's already lost uh, almost 20k. And now he does have a super heal admittedly, but a double wooster just opening up onto you is never a good feeling to have lost 25k, almost 30k at this point early in the battle. 
C has been claimed, by the way, by the side of KSC, but we're seeing the Yu Yang getting ready to go back in. And now the Woosters say, okay, Salem, you backed out. You're going to start to heal. That's okay. Guess what? We'll just start working on Shashiro Botan. Not having a DD over there is really going to hurt the side, and you just saw the radar there. It's not going to spot anybody. Gearing just stays outside it, doesn't shoot, and he'll be able to uh, just sit there and work ships down. Oh, we got two big things going on. So the Salem's back down to 30k already, despite the super heal. He's down to 28k, and he is running for the hills, because he needs to. Masterful play here from KSC to set them up here. Masterful play from KSC. And 19k. Shots out from the curve first, on to the mosque, and we'll have to see what happens here. But we're starting to see at B, the push is happening. Henri's out there with a the Shimikaze. Um... And then we're seeing the Ragnar Conqueror and Mosca going over. But we're going to go full wide zoom, see if we can see anything. Danny's love is spotted, but Jason is down to 10k. And that early kill on KSC last game helped AP win it. I'm wondering if this early kill on to the Salem, if it gets finished, is going to help KSC win it. 5,300, 2,200, and he's gone. The fire burns him out. So now the Woosters are just going to switch over to the Moskva, and Shashiro Botan's got no choice but to just run. Gearing sitting there, gearing spotting him. So the gearing's gonna cut in now towards D, take the cap, help Dastard. Des Moines managed to dodge the Torps, and there's the smoke from the gearing again. So those Des Moines are playing with fire sitting in the middle of the ocean, only smoked up, but it's working. Ohio of Danny's love is getting chunked. 30,000 off of him already. Make that almost 40,000, and he needs to move. But now you start to see the shots come over and try to deny the push. So we got the Moskva of Euro CV who's moving. Hasn't taken any damage yet. But you're going to see the fact that we're going to see KSC start to collapse in because the Moskva isn't going to be able to do anything to stop it with no DD over there. If he opens up, he's just going to get burned down to the ground by the Woosters. And KSC is trying to put a stranglehold on it. The big play is what happens here. Do we lose? Does KSC lose their containment on this side if the Ohio goes down because that Ohio is not in a good spot and Torps do hit the Henri so he's at 40k now or do KSC manage to hold prevent that push and then they've got all of AP in a little box just like KSC was in game one Ohio of Danny loves down to 33k we're gonna go out a little wide zoom see what happens so the Des Moines are pushing over to help stem the tide at A. They're going to get themselves into position, shoot over those islands, try to smash the stuff. The Ohio of Danny's love just wants to get out of there right now. Here we see Hitaki Hiyoshi's opened up. Now, they've got islands between them and the Moskva and the Conqueror. So they don't mind opening up. And two Des Moines shooting at a Ragnar is a scary feeling for any Ragnar player, speaking as one myself. He's down to 27 thousand on the first shots he is having to turn out now and this should allow danny's love to break uh concealment at or pardon me break sight at some point and big hit onto hataki the on switches the ap he catches the game return of hataki and hataki's taking 20k on two salvos already hataki with the quick turnout he's trying to get it so he doesn't take any more damage looks like he's gone to the point danny's love has gone dark but he's only at 15k and now we're starting to see this hard push at a Meanwhile, over at the side of D, we're seeing here come the ships pushing through. Moskva of Shashiro is still full health, but we're seeing the Woosters and the Gearing push into sea. And this is about to become a knife fight, ladies and gentlemen. This is about to become a knife fight. 30k left on Hitaki Hiyoshi. He hasn't used heals yet, as far as I can see. Henri of Woshi at 39k. So he's taking a little bit of damage since those first torps from the Shima hit him. We're going to watch these second torps as they come in. If these second torps hit Woshi, he's in a problem spot. That looks like Hydro. I believe. Yeah, that's going to be Hydro. Is he going to find a dodge line, though? He's trying to stop and turn. But the problem with this stop and turn is it's going to open him up. One, he's going to take a Shimatorp on the tip. Two, he's got to give the game return right now to man with an RX-7, and he wants to pay him back for what happened to Hitaki. However, he's not going to be successful as that Henri has a very tight turning circle. Danny's love has been respotted, 18k dropping, Woshi down to 24k, and the Ragnar is at 22k, but he's taking a point situation, 250 point lead for the side of KSC, but they're down 40,000 health. We haven't seen that push through C happening yet, so we'll have to keep an eye on that, see what happens. Woshi's at 17k, and there goes Danny's love, so the ships have been 
uh, equalized, but it's still a 150 point lead for the side of KSC. And Woshi's not long for this world. Even Aussie Zeus has opened up on him at this point. So we're seeing him at 9k. He's on double fire right now. 7k. We'll zoom in a little bit, give it the close range as we see. And now the Des Moines are trying to use those islands to keep themselves protected. They're saying, we're willing to give up A. We'll sit on the islands here, finish off the Henri, and then we'll be able to play from there. But is Hitaki going to pay for it with his life? We'll have to watch then see. Woshi's down to 1,500. Shots are out on Hitaki again. Aussie Zeus still opening up on him. 15, And Aussie Zeus does get Henri. So now Aussie Zeus can sit on that edge and torp. Though he's got to watch out for the Ragnar and Vampire. Each team has two caps, but Hataki's down to 5k and he's burning. Man with an RX-7 is taking the brunt now and he's trying to shoot. Hataki is still detected, so he's just sitting there trying to stay dark as Floops does as well. But now that push has finally come through. And look at that. Gearing has smoked the Woosters up. Woosters are sitting in a prime position to fire over islands on to the enemy ships as they take AB. And this map has been split in half. Now, one thing to watch, Shashiro Botan had to run away early. Where is he going to position himself now, and what is Daster going to do? Looks like Daster's trying to hold him in check. Hataki at 11k after the first heal, but he's got to sit behind that island because he is so close to being spotted. Looks like also they're going to start to send the vampire out to hunt for Aussie Zeus, and Aussie Zeus... Aussie Zeus has got to be very careful because he's about to run into a vampire and that's not the ship you want to run into, especially with a Ragnar there to radar you and a Conqueror as backup. Woosters, meantime, still sitting on good health. They're starting to open up on the Yamato. Yamato has taken about 20k in damage so far. Here come shots out from the Yamato. Are they going to hit Shadow Wolffish? They do, but it's only 8k. Shadow Wolffish will take that any day. Conqueror burning, but Conqueror, as we know, is going to just print a ship at some point here. Oh, oh, narrow dodge by Aika Kia on them, but it looks like the Conqueror, mm, it looks like he's got a dodge line, but he's burning down and he's lost a lot of health. Two fires on him. You got to think he's going to hit the print ship mechanic soon, but Des Moines got his broadside. Is it going to matter if the Des Moines Citadel's in here? Oh, Des Moines doesn't Citadel him yet. There comes the Conqueror heal starting. Conqueror's DCP'd. He's healed. And now Aussie Zeus has been found and Aussie Zeus is in trouble. He's in the corner of the map and he's got nowhere to go. Conquer is healing, but they've been effective at chunking him down still, which will mean that heal's not quite as effective as it would have been. Meanwhile, points. KSC, during all of this, as they've played Rope-A-Dope with AP on ships, is sitting at almost 800 points. They have a 270-point lead. They're down 13,000 health points, but that'll change soon. Ragnar's been spotted. Ragnar's being opened up on 14k in healing, but he's getting opened up on by the Des Moines. We'll see if any of those Des Moines shots hit. Few hits there, 15k, 16k. That heal's gonna be over soon. Couple more hits back down to 15.8. Looks like the heal is over, so now how much damage does he take in return? He's dodging, he's dipping, he's ducking, and he's diving, and he's dodging. And if you don't recognize that reference, go watch some movies. But anyway, Ragnar of Quincy, 15.8k, and he's going to find Aussie Zeus. Aussie Zeus is in a world of hurt here. Aussie Zeus isn't going to get out of this life. He puts the Desperate Torps out. Oh, but while we're distracted, Gearing has flooded out the Conqueror. While we were watching Aussie Zeus, Gearing has flooded out the Conqueror successfully. So Conqueror takes a Torp. He's gone. Three ship to one lead for KSC. Aussie Zeus dies, but he does trade good damage onto the Vampire and the Ragnar and Vampire in the corner. So... Once again, 280 point lead for the side of KSC. Caps are even, but now the Moskva of Euro CV is being chunked. And Shadow Wolf's about to go down. Shadow Wolf goes down, so it's only a one ship lead. 180 points now. But Euro CV, he's at 16k. He's at 6k. That's a big chunk out of him. Shots are off at gearing. He's going to try to shoot the gearing. Last shots are in our Euro. Euro goes down, gets a little bit of damage onto the gearing, but not major. So four ship to three ship lead for the side of KSC. And they're at 836 points, 270 up. Now, this is interesting. The Kerr first and Moskva are kind of playing Ring Around the Rosie here. As the Yu Yang's in C. Gotta expect that the Gearing's gonna spot the Yu Yang pretty soon. Or they're gonna have a radar come out and spot him. So we're gonna see what happens here. Looks like the Gearing's getting ready to engage. He knows that it's the Yu Yang down here because they know where the Ragnar and Vampire are. And Gearing's radar, Yu Yang is running radar like I suspected. So Gearing is radared, but he's going to push up and he's going to say, Yu Yang can't torp me. I win a straight out gunfight with the Yu Yang as long as the Moskva doesn't interact too much. And we'll see. Kerr first turning away because he's seen the torps. 
Gearing at 17k, Wooster of I Am Coop is chunking down Mr. Yamato there, and there's a nice wave of twerps from the gearing out on him. Gearing pushing in. Here come shots from the Kerr first out on the Yamato. Let's watch these shots in. Is this going to make uh, the Kerr first pick pay off? Oh, those shots look clean. Shots are in, and he's at 51k. It's not the greatest hit, but Gearing Torps are going to be in. Gearing's played really well. 15k on the Yamato. And now the Gearing's just proximity spotting the Yu Yang for the moment, though. That's going to change fairly quickly. Hataki Yoshi, by the way, now being burned down by the Ragnar and Vampire. They've gone back into the fight. Yamato, though, at 12k. So Hataki's trying not to die to the Yamato. Yamato's going to go down here to the Torps from Floops. And those Gearing's have been wrecking havoc with their Torps on ship. Oh, Yu Yang spot down to 4,900. 920 points for the side of KSC. They're trying to close this out. Force it to a game three. Looks like they're going to be able to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Hitaki Hiyoshi down to 2,500, though. He gets another set of shots out on the Ragnar. Gets him down to 2,700. Gets a final set of shots out. 2,300 on the Ragnar. Will it hit? It does. And Hitaki manages to trade out the Ragnar. Six ship to four lead for the side of KSC. There goes the Yu Yang. Seven ships to four. 960 points to 520. And ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen ksc says we will not be denied we will not be shut out let's take it to a game three 28 points until victory vampire desperately trying to trade it back there's the radars out vampire's gonna be spotted will he go down before the game ends moskva's not kerfer's putting shots out on the moskva doesn't get real good damage but vampire's at 8700 16 points until ksc wins are they gonna kill the vampire first 6800 we'll see 4,3800, 12 points. Yep, looks like the vampire is going to go down. Yep, ladies and gentlemen, vampire goes down. And with that, your winner officially will be the side of KSC. And they even this series up at 1-2-1. One, one. GG, well played to both teams. And man, KSC's got to feel good about that after the first game. Not sure about that Kerr first pick, to be honest. But they won, so who can complain?